Oh. Oh. What's going on here, man? That's a hammer I was waiting for. Oh, what's your deal, brother? And what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do? Oh. What's going on on third YouTube land? I might have started him just a little bit. He wasn't <laughs> ready for that. We're here with the Omega. I'm Omega. scared. Kenny Omega. Stop. The cleaner, AEW champion, one of the main men, one of the best match ever guys out there, veteran of the game, uh, one of the people that people really know for being able to put on a show in wrestling, and uh, we're here in the uh, the super duper man cave today. Uh, oh, that's right. We got cool stuff everywhere. This is a, a bro's paradise. There's video games, there's Marvel stuff, and uh, we're hanging with wrestlers. And uh, we're gonna be working today a little bit on his neck, his shoulder. He just made a comment, he said, I'm just gonna keep all of the belts and uh, put on all the best matches right now. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a struggle and it, it's a hustle. And uh, every, every day is a new day. And uh, I just need to make sure I'm in working condition because I'm gallivanting all over the globe and I need to be in working order. So I searched out the best. And if it weren't for my friend, Alex Jabali, whose man cave this is, yes. uh, I wouldn't know. But the legend that is, Bo Hightower. So yep. here we are, hopefully, he can put back a few pieces together and hopefully put me back into working order for our next big match, pay-per-view. Which is coming up? November 13th, Minneapolis, Minnesota, full gear. Full crowd? I think so, I think it's already sold out, I think so. Sold out? Yeah, uh, I mean, we're really lucky. Right now, I think because of perhaps, you know, the, you know the, the global pandemic, people are just itching to get out into a live atmosphere, to watch a show, to see their favorite wrestlers, or just see live entertainment. So people are really chomping at the bit to get into our shows, and we've had some real big ones. We had a real big doozy in um, New York at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Mm -hmm. So 20, 000, over 20,000 people on a Wednesday. It's been incredible, fans have been incredible, the wrestling community's been incredible, and hopefully at uh, Full Gear it's just gonna continue and we're gonna have a full house and I'll be able to put in a show there too. All right, let's go. Maybe turn your head to the left all the way, Great. and then to the right all the way, and then back to center, and look up to the ceiling, and then down. Got a thick ass neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so going down was the best of the group? Yeah, you yeah. could tell, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, that's the one I got a I got a little bit of a uh, snap crackleys, uh -huh. but left it just it right. just stops. And same with going back. Yeah, I feel like there's a big pop or something that needs to come out there, and I would be able to look straight up to the ceiling, but it's like there's a an obstruction. Okay. Yeah. And you said you uh, you work with the trainer sometimes with AEW, and sometimes you see one is off, and then, yeah, yeah. Know, so so he's able to get you and you're like like this opposite occasionally yeah it's been an issue since 2018 i just get real bad vertigo i get dizzy in the ring i can't the room spins and uh it's been a new skill i've had to inherit which okay. is wrestling in a, a spinning ring so to make sure i get that straightened out as much as i can as often as i can is is really paramount for okay. my performances and i think you know doing backflips and going onto tables that don't break would probably do something to your neck i feel like yeah there's a myriad <laughs> of issues with professional wrestling and uh you can work as safe as you can but you can't avoid everything there's always something that could go wrong makes sense okay we got linked up through a, a mutual well one of your coworkers. that's right a friend of mine brian machine cage yeah so it's interesting like you guys are talking it's like we've got the new monday night wars you know 20 something years later wednesday night wars yeah saturday night wars you guys are really making an impact and really uh, cutting into the main promotions demographics, which of course accelerates both parts, just like it did in the 90s, right? Absolutely. The sport wins when there's competition. No, I totally agree. And for me, I know I've always said it publicly, is that I don't really even look at it as competition. I just look at what we do as an alternative. Much as when I watched WCW and ECW, when there were three promotions to choose from on a main stage, I would still watch all three pro products. I would still have things that I enjoyed from all three, things that I disliked from all three. And I never wished for one to fail and one to succeed. I never wished for any one of them to go out of business or to be eaten up or swallowed. I never wished for a monopoly. So, I mean, for me, I just think it's great that pro wrestling is flourishing again. Like I said, we're getting great live crowds. We're able to do what we do best, which I think is put on great performances and matches. And um, I think, you know, there's an element to that WWE still does best, given their, their history and the fact that they've had, you know, a lot of legends and industry greats and I can't really speak anymore. Oh. <laughs> I was a WCW kid. Uh-huh. Going back to like 1990. Yeah. You know. And so in the Monday Wars I was like we're finally going to get them this time. Yeah. And then they didn't get them and you know. You know it's funny you say that cuz I remember like in ah in oh, What's going on here, man? Okay. You're talking us through. What? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to talk it through. So I was playing 
real competitive hockey back during the Monday Night Wars, and WCW wasn't really a thing for us. It, and, we knew what it was. You could find a way Canada, to watch right? it. You're, you're yes. in Manitoba. Yeah, I'm, I'm Manitoba. We don't, we don't really play hockey in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, we had heard that, geez, Hall, Nash are gone, mm -hmm. and they're going to this other place. And I think at that point, yeah, at that point, Hogan had, would, had already left, and then, you know, he, he made the big surprise that he joined the NWO, and then they sort of launched this sort of pro wrestling history altering movement. And uh, from that point on, I think at first I was really cheering for WWE. I was thinking like, how could you pull a fast one on my favorite promotion like that? And mm -hmm. I would cheer for them to win the Monday Night Wars. And I loved DX. And I thought it was real cool that they invaded WCW. And then I sat back and I thought like, what, what am I doing? I'm watching both shows now. I'm actively hoping that one wins this war. This week, who's got the more ratings? But, but what I didn't realize was that there are a lot of things that I didn't realize it until I really thought it through that I'm enjoying a lot of these segments from WCW. I'm enjoying these cruiserweight matchups. I'm enjoying the US heavyweight title matches. I'm enjoying even seeing how the NWO goes in the offensive, how they respond to the attack. I thought it really shook things up in a positive way. Sure. Because it caused WWE to up their game, and WCW, of course, was always on their A game because they knew they couldn't slip up. Right. Otherwise, they would they would lose everything. Right. It was a real exciting time, and um, I'm I'm glad I saw the error in my ways. Right. Because I think we're uh, I think we're about the same age, so we would have been watching you know similar stuff. You know. Probably. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, the creative uh, WWF at the time too. You know, they really were able to create talent mm -hmm. um, and new talent, and even snag some of. You know, taking the big show, for example, taking some of WCW's talent yeah. as well. You know, the Rock and Sock connection. You That's know, right. the, the the turning Stone Cold into you know Stone Cold and and being able to work that, and then also bringing some of that extreme the ECW style stuff into yeah. some of their matches too was yeah. very interesting. So the like Mankind all did three did, re yeah, yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> you know, some of those matches were crazy. So yeah, the the entertainment value really shot up. And I and again, I think you know some of the vindictiveness maybe after the fact, after the absorption and the invasion and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think there was definitely a drop off at some of the creative parts of it too afterwards. I think that competition, yeah, breeding uh, new ideas, new innovation. Where during ruthless aggression, like there was no competition really. Yeah. So it's easy for the creative side to kind of just coast and just ride some of your big names and. And I think that's what we saw, you know, early in the 90s too, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the, the Warrior Hogan era. It was kind of just like, mm, we're just riding our stars now. We're not doing new ideas. We're not innovating. You know, hopefully now this new era, we're going to see that same type of innovation, you know, from you guys making that push in the mainstream with the with the money and the TV network and everything else backing it to where there's actually real competition, you know, snagging top talent from over there. It's, it's going to be very interesting, and I'm excited for it. We're sort of reliving the glory days, the times when wrestling was fun, when you could really expect the unexpected because you knew both promotions were, were coming at you with full artillery and with their, their biggest guns. We're doing what we know how to do best, which is put on great matches, and WWE is doing what they do best, and that's uh, putting on a, a, a great show. So who are some of the guys that you looked up to coming up in wrestling? Because obviously your style is... Yeah. is, is pretty unique and isn't really seen as much these days. And then uh, talk us through how, how stylistically you started developing your wrestling style and how that took you over to New Japan and all that kind of That's stuff. That's a good question. You know, I, I really... So when I was a really, really young child, my favorite was The Ultimate Warrior, far and away. Um, being Canadian, the whole all-American Hulkamania thing, I couldn't really relate to it too much. <laughs> and in Canada, we love our country, I'm sure. But we're not, we weren't really patriotic. We never really had a, a superhero or a figure that would brandish the, the Canadian flag and, and talk about, you know, Canadian freedom Alpha and things flight. like that. Right. That's, really, that's honestly <laughs> the only thing I could think of was Al Alpha Flight. That's the only thing. Um, and, and I thought that was cool because I actually really thought, you know, the, the costumes and color schemes were awesome. <laughs> um, and that's probably also why I really had an appreciation for watching Olympic hockey. You know, even though I, I, I had a, a team where I lived, the Winnipeg Jets, I would get the most excited for Team Canada at the Olympics, whether it be juniors or, or you know, or, or otherwise. Ultimate Warrior is my favorite. I loved his physique. I loved that he could channel this inner power that sort of caused him to negate all pain and make him super, like a, a real life superhero in a way. He's, real, he's larger than life. Right. You know, once I started to kind of get older and I realized that 
professional wrestling might be something I want to explore. I want to be a wrestler. This is something I, I, I want to do, I need to do. I think that's when I started to fall in love with Mr. Perfect. Yep. And I loved his movement. I loved Same. that he was a multi-sport athlete, which you know was a lot like what I was when I was in junior high and high school. There was not really one sport that I loved more than another. I just loved all sports. My competitive nature made me want to win in all of them. And uh, seeing Mr. Perfect and the ah, uh, the uh, you know those skits that he would do, where he would throw himself a touchdown, and get a hole in one, <laughs> um, you know, per bowl a perfect 300 game. Things like that uh, really struck a chord with me. And watching him in the ring, like the way he'd move, even though I wasn't in wrestling, I was still too young to really understand. I could still tell that this is like a top tier athlete. This guy moves a little different. This guy is unique. Which is why I think to this day, you know, out of uh, the hundreds and thousands of wrestlers you could go back to study tape of. He's one of the guys that still hold up to this day. Right, I agree. Okay. And then moving forward, I think my next big boom for me was uh, watching Rob Van Dam in ECW. It was, RBD. yeah, again, not someone who I could really mimic in the ring because he was just, he had a different kind of athleticism. He was really flexible when mm -hmm. um, that's something I lack. I can't just do the splits on command. But you know, huge RVD fan, huge Jean Claude Van Damme fan. Aha! And uh, that sort of, you know, seeing that there is a sort of smaller sized promotion with such talented people in ECW, whether it be, you know, RVD, Jerry Lynn, Super Crazy, Tajiri, guys like that, Lance Storm, super athletic guys that were perfecting this new style that you never really got to see on, on either Monday Night Programming. Right. So maybe want to kind of make my own, and then from there on, I kind of fell in love with Japanese wrestling. And I'd watch like you know World of Sport from the UK. I would watch some Lucha Libre. I just wanted to take the things that I liked from every style and sort of like mishmash it, make it into something of my own. And uh, that's kind of what I tried to do. And I would say probably from there on in, if I were to name one more guy that was really really an inspiration to kind of getting to where I'm, where I'm at now in the ring. I, I, my, maybe it's Kurt Angle again. Like I just I, I appreciate the real athleticism that goes into what he does, mm -hmm. without sacrificing that entertainment aspect. He was willing to do whatever it took to make a crowd happy, to make people laugh, to make people cry. But his capabilities in the ring were second to none. And uh, oh, and uh, and yeah. So aside from a list of, uh, uh, you know, a handful of, of fantastic Japanese talents, I would say on the American side of things, the biggest influences for me were probably Mr. Perfect, Kurt Angle, and then I would say, you know, like, there'd be like the Owen Hart's, um, RVD's, uh, you know, Eddie Guerrero's, guys like that. Okay, nice. It's interesting there. You, you listen to guys that aren't on a lot of guys' top four or five when they bring those names up. Everybody knows that when you bring them up, but mm. they're not the cliche ones, which, again, is not surprising coming from you. you know, no, I, yeah. Thinking a little differently, answering a little differently, uh, making decisions a little differently than what people expect or maybe even what they want from you. Yeah, I mean, um, when I talk about studying footage and things like that, I got to figure out ways to watch guys that I can apply to my own style or apply to my own way of thinking in wrestling. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt that with a guy like Angle, being as, as, as athletic as he is and not willing, or, or willing, should I say, to do whatever it took to have a memorable performance, those are the guys that I feel like I can still learn things from. And a guy like Mick Foley, alternatively, not the most athletic guy naturally, but for some reason always had some of the most memorable performances of all time. And you know, you got to think about the who, what, where, when, why, and there's a lot to learn from that. So sometimes you go back and watch a match just for the enjoyment of it. But with the amount of time that I have, I try to use that for study purposes and a little bit of enjoyment too. Right. Yeah. I find that the things that I watch for enjoyment are, uh, are like the, the worst wrestling possible. But like the bad funny, you know? Anybody who's familiar with you knows that you're a, a gamer, that you're into anime and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, the, you know, the Final Fantasy, you know, inspiration. A lot of people mm -hmm. have said that, you know, Resident Evil also influences your style and look occasionally. Yep. 
what other you know animes or games do you think you have incorporated that maybe people don't realize that you've done it subtly that they need to go back and look at and and look for that you've incorporated into your persona your 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 look at any given time well i think the original was uh always street fighter i think the first video game centric thing i ever incorporated was uh hadouken from street fighter people think maybe that means i, I threw an invisible fireball or a real one it was just like a double palm thrust kind of thing right and uh that's when I came back from my first and only excursion at WWE where, you know, I realized that I had no real character and whatever they came up with for me, I never felt like I could relate to it, I never felt like I could uh, act out that persona to its, its best form. And so I thought, well, rather than create something, have something created for me, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it one last go, one last kick at the can mm -hmm. to see if just being me and being sort of a just you with little variations on it, right? Yeah, yeah, a, a more twists. exaggerated version yes. of, of of Tyson Smith, which is that's my real name. Yeah, that's interesting because, like, you talk, you know, we talk about a lot of kayfabe, and and people are able to take on these different. They're acting, right? Like they're, yeah. they're creating persona, which is an incredibly talented thing to do. But I know a lot of performers, or basically like a live action hero. Mm. So how are you supposed to be a, a fantastic actor pretending to be somebody else, remembering all these gimmicks and lines, but also yeah. be super skilled and talented and athletic at the same time? And, and, you know, there have been a couple people, I suppose, that have been yep. able to mesh those things together. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's a very realistic expectation if you want the best product out there. Definitely. And so it's it's interesting to me that you're like, hey, listen, I'm just going to be me, throw a little twist on it, embrace the nerdiness, but I'm just going to put on really, really good matches. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, people... In the modern era, you're considered top one to three as far as best match uh, performers that there are. In fact, you're one of the only people to ever go over five stars, right? Six, seven stars, mm -hmm. uh, you know, according to Dave Meltzer. Yeah. Negative two, according to uh, Mr. Some Cornette. Other. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> Which is great. That's great. I like the variation, to be honest. I feel that if I'm if I'm performing so strongly in one area, there should be equal amount of negative response to it as well. It right. just I, 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 the territory. I, I, yeah. If you're doing well, something worthwhile, you're gonna you're gonna get both. Yeah. Right. And, and also, I feel like okay. Well, if that's the case, that's sort of confirmation that I've I committed to the idea. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to commit wholeheartedly to everything that I do, 110 percent. So if I put all my eggs into one basket and it ends up great for some people, it might not be that feeling for others, mm -hmm. which is understandable. And, you know, frankly, creating content that people are enjoying instead of just being a negative ass on the internet, yeah. putting out negativity. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody specifically. No. But, you know. <laughs> no, no shots fired or anything, but yeah. Yeah, so you know, a lot of the fans obviously they enjoy you, and, and you're getting a reintroduction back into the American culture. You know, particularly being on cable television now. Yeah. Tell me about the fandom in, in Japan versus America, and like what the, the experience has been like. So you know, it's 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 crazy that you ask because even though I could easily say that um, American fans are louder and they're more boisterous, oh, right? Um, I I don't feel. I, I mean, and of course, you know the uh, <laughs> the. Uh, that's a hammer I was waiting for, I think. I, I feel a lot of similarities nowadays with uh, oh, with how fans react to performances, how fans that don't have an axe to grind. Push your head straight back. Okay. Keep pushing. pushing. And look up. Keep looking up. Keep going. Mm -hmm. A little further. Right there. Look up. Good. Oh, back to center. So your C1 is usually to the left. Is that what you've yeah. been told? Oh. Am I supposed to push side? Oh. Try to hold your ground. I'm trying to. <laughs> Try to stand your ground. I'm standing it, alright. Don't right. give in to the bully. Ugh. Don't give in to the corporate power. Mm -hmm. Stand your ground. I've taken all I can stands. <laughs> you know? Jeez. But yeah, um, I would say that the, the major difference is uh, social media interactions. I, I find that by far and away, um, native English speakers are much more volatile online, and um, <laughs> and you're fluent in Japanese, yes? Yeah, so that that's how I know to how to make the comparison. You just don't get that. At the very least, even at the most 
basic level, I would say a wrestling fans respect the effort that the wrestlers put in. Hmm. Whereas in America or the UK or you know sometimes Canada or whatever, you know people want us to die. They want us to get injured. They want us to be retired. They want us to be out of work. And I hear it hundreds of times a day. And if I wasn't um, kind of numb to it, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I might be in a real terrible mental place. I, that's why I worry for other people who may not be, be in similar shoes and may, may not be used to that. And the fans just feel like they're fighting the war alongside their favorite team. Sure. And so they feel like they're doing their due diligence. And what they're actually doing is probably not what anyone really wishes them to do. And uh, it's sad. You know, it's sad. And I, I, these guys got to look in the mirror, you know, at some point in time. They, and are they proud of the person that they see looking back? I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they are proud of themselves. Maybe they're having fun. I don't know. Maybe these guys have no lives. Hmm. I have no clue. Like, that could be their only sole purpose. That is that is their purpose, they feel. Sure. When they wake up in the day and just to... Troll. Troll, you know, via their own account and many other anonymous accounts that they've created. So that's it's interesting. Uh, I think you just created a euphemism for our political sphere as well, or, you know... We pick sides and are just going to try to destroy everybody else around mm -hmm. us, uh, just for my quote-unquote side. But that side doesn't even know you exist. So just be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Top three general animes. Yeah. In order. What do you general. got? General of all time. Yeah. Uh, Hajime no Ippo for sure. It's a boxing anime. It's incredible. My, okay. my absolute favorite by far, by far. Oh man, the other ones—it's like that's that's rough. I don't know. I could maybe Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk's another one. I love Slam Dunk. I, li I like sports anime a lot. Yeah. I feel like it really captures the competitive spirit and what fighters or what competitive athletes have to go through in life. So like a lot of my—it's it sounds like I'm just only watching one genre, which is not true. Sure. But yeah, it might be like Hajime no Ippo, Slam Dunk, and maybe like Yuri on Ice or something like that. It's just. Yeah, I don't know, but but I like everything, sure. all, all types of storytelling and all that stuff. And of of ones that have you know come over and been dubbed and you know ended up on Cartoon Network, mm -hmm. what, what you know fans out there, what would you tell somebody to start with or watch with that have been you know translated and you know commercialized? Is there somewhere you know? So I would say if you're gonna watch a movie, uh -huh. you watch a movie. I would say watch a movie called Your Name. And if you're to watch a series, I would say if you're just a fan of very good drama and storytelling, there's a series called Erased, which is uh, incredible. Favorite all-time character on a Street Fighter in the Street Fighter uh, universe? Yeah, universe. I'd probably say Cody. Cody or Alex. Not Vega? No. Why'd you say Vega? Nobody likes Vega. Oh. But I just feel like with your hair and your movement... Uh, yeah. And that should be wearing a mask. I didn't say you had a face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> I do like Vega, however. Just not to play with. No. <laughs> no. No. Said no whatever. Oh. That's funny. All right, so now, so now being back over here, you uh -huh. know, you've, you've had some matches with uh, the previous generation, uh, some, of, some of the veteran talent that's come over. Who, who's been cool to work with, you know, now that you've been back in the States, some guys that you've watched on TV in the past? Yeah, I mean, like, Maybe you never thought you'd be able to wrestle with? Or? I mean, I never thought I would have a, an extended program or even a, a, a real, like, big match scenario with Christian. So it was really cool to get in the ring with him and see how that would be like, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I would say probably for our generation, like you said, we're about the same age. Mm -hmm. We probably watched, you know, those uh, TLC matches from back in the day. And uh, those are game changers for, for guys like me. Yeah. Who really wanted to get into wrestling to reinvent the wheel a little bit and to do in innovative things and to just blow people away. So Christian being involved in stuff like that, guys like Matt Hardy being involved in stuff like that to work with them and to see that they still have that same outlook and they want to do new and exciting things is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because Cage had said he, you know, he was like being able to show the ring with Sting, which he never in a yeah. million thought he'd be able to. Right, like, that's true. It was like pretty cool for him. Yeah. Now I had heard that, you know, the match you had with AJ Styles was one that sort of motivated you and wanted, kind of made you keep going. Yeah. And uh, so tell me a little bit about that. I had uh, returned from um, developmental. I wasn't sure what I would be doing. I remember that I thought, um, I'm, I do enjoy training at the, at the dojo and I was thinking like, you know, jiu-jitsu is fun for me. Maybe I'll get into MMA. Um, this is before like the big UFC boom, like pride was sort of becoming a thing. And uh, I became a huge fan of, of Kazushi Sakuraba because he was, you know, he represented pro wrestling style, 
which I thought, like, man, he's defeating the Gracies. The Gracie killer. He, yeah. And he's he's got... Gracie hell, Hunter. Gracie Hunter. Gracie Hunter, yeah. Gracie Hunter. And he's amassed quite a record by being a, a quote-unquote pro wrestler. So, I'm like, man, that's a hell of a spokesperson for our sport. Um, and I think even Josh Barnett, too, would represent pro wrestling when he would fight. And he was incredible on the ground as well. So, I thought, like, man, I just want to... I would love to maybe fight and, and but be a guy to put on a show as well, much like how Sakuraba did. Right. And uh, uh and uh what, what were we doing again? Yeah, so you I mean I, I would do like local tournaments. I would spar with guys that we had locally that would that would do some fights in the UFC and it, it was going really well. Like I would do I'd get gold medals at our locals and stuff like that. I would do multiple weight classes just because I wanted to get the most bang for my buck from like my twenty dollar entry fee. There you go. And uh, I remember I would I would never train with gi, but I would I would do the gi just so I could because as soon as you paid that entry fee, you could enter whatever you wanted pretty much. I was really enjoying it, and uh, I really thought I had a knack for it. I loved competing, as you know. I remember that my local promoter from way back in the day he had said like hey we got aj coming in and we just don't know who's gonna wrestle him and we thought maybe you'd come back for one more just one more could you do this one big solid for me yeah oh keep going yeah so um with your arm and your story actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um i don't know if i can stand my ground here you can okay. do it yeah i'm trying i'm trying you could do it yeah yeah so, uh, I didn't do this match with AJ, and I remember that because the tournament was was close to where I was uh, I was doing that match, I had just cut a whole bunch of weight. I remember en really enjoying the match, but also feeling like I didn't look the way that I wanted to, and it was tough to do both. Okay. I felt like I couldn't sort of half-ass one mm -hmm. if I was going to do both. I had to, you know, really try and put my all my efforts into one, rather than uh, try to balance both. Or just kind of be, you know, passable at, at both. Right. It wasn't. That was inexcusable. So, um, I remember that I had this great match with AJ, and at the time I thought like, wow, like AJ is like the top guy in, in TNA. Right. And if I'm kind of holding my own with a guy that's that good, then maybe I should give wrestling more of an honest, honest effort now that there's actually an option again. Like it's not just WWE or nothing. Like Japan's business was booming. TNA was was also, you know, somewhat of an option. Yeah. Um, so I thought maybe I should should give it one more try. But then I wanted to see how this tournament was going to go. Tournament went well, and strangely enough, I would say the reason why I didn't stick with jujitsu or MMA was because I ended up winning a gold medal off of points, and it really made me mad. And I remember that I. <laughs> I had apologized to my opponent. I didn't want to win by points. I wanted to win with like an actual decisive finish. Okay. And I thought, geez, even if I win, so you'd rather get the finish or get finished. Yes. Than have a yes. Good, okay. Yeah. And I thought, or like, an entertainer, folks. Yeah. Which that's what it was. So I thought, if I'm really only focusing on putting on a show and mm -hmm. making sure that I kind of direct the eyes on the floor to my matches, maybe I'm just an entertainer. Like I could get myself in trouble if I'm. If I go up against a guy like, for example, you know, like Vanderlei Silva at the time, yeah. and if I'm, if my, if my focus and, and what I want to do with that match is, is just shock people or get their attention or, or be entertaining rather than come up with a game plan to win, I'm, I might be in big trouble. <laughs> so, I thought maybe I'm actually just an entertainer. Maybe what I should do is, is, sports related but right. also entertainment. So I thought I'm, I must be a wrestler. Made for this, yeah. Yeah. So I gave it one more shot. I went. One, I did one more tour in America. That led to my first tour in Japan, and then the rest is kind of history. It just never stopped. Still going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's not what I expected out of that. Where'd you know that? It's like it's a shock all the way up, but like a good one in a good way, in a good way. You felt the crack there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in like my sort of like lower. Oh, lower yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Awesome. That was great. Got ankle and hip too. Mm hmm. <laughs> Hadn't had that one before? No. <laughs> no, never, no. no. I was no. expecting it to come from this way. Uh huh. Not from you. Switcheroo. Yeah. Bait and switch. You know? Bait and come we, back and bait and. Yeah, we do it all the time in wrestling. <laughs> you know? Alright, let's see if we can get the low edge here. Oh! Yep. 
This one's also a little bit low edge. Drop your right shoulder. Oh! <laughs> Still don't think you're cracky? Woo! You're proving me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There's levels. Yeah. All right, let's flip over on your stomach. All right. So let's lift this leg up all the way, as high as you can. And straighten the knee. Okay, now other side. You're gonna switch. Okay, so the left feels easier? Yeah. Yeah. That's where I've been. Needing more oomph. Needing the gravity to work. Kenny Omega, hammered from behind while Deadpool watches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just an average Wednesday for me. You know? Yeah. Living the dream, man. Yeah. All right, raise this leg up again. Good, back down. Oh, there we go. Okay, and again. Nice. Okay, left side. Left side feel better, too? Yeah. One more. There. Oh. All right, right again. Yeah. One more. Oh, there. But I'm the juggernaut. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Just breathe. Please. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's Everything's cool. fine. Everything's okay. Everything's gonna be all right. It's fine. Oh. Oh. You get embarrassed? Not, not really. <laughs> really. I've done some crazy things in front of a lot of people, and oh. and plan to keep doing it. So. What's the craziest? I don't even know. It depends on like who you are, I guess. Who are you? Oh, who, who am I? I'm someone with no shame, pr probably. Yeah. I mean, uh, at least Kenny Omega doesn't have any. I feel like um, Tyson part of the, part of, I, maybe I don't know. I don't really go out or do anything, so hmm. I feel like maybe. Maybe. But but like, no, like especially you know for the the indie that I did in Japan for my local in Winnipeg, uh -huh. we've done some crazy things. Um, part of it was on one of my documentary that I did, where. Uh, an event for my birthday escalated into an all-out like kind of food fight. Mm -hmm. There's like cake throwing and moves on cakes and stuff like that. Um, we've used all oh, all sorts of silly characters, angles, said funny stuff. It's it's all well documented. A lot of people ask me if I'm ever embarrassed or if I wish I could take it back, and I'm not at all. I uh, I go back to those days uh, when I recall the crowd and the time, and I remember smiling faces, everyone laughing, cheering, you know, going back to the locker room and having all the guys give me standing ovations and saying it was you know so funny and you know maybe they needed that just to kind of break the tension from having serious match to serious match or serious event to serious event. You know, I like I like being that guy. Okay. I love comedy. <clears throat> How was that feeling on the back? Good. No, I actually felt like you were hammering down like a lumpy area, like a part that was was raised above. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, you, it's funny that you, you can stop feel it. Yeah, you stopped me from being the hunchback of Notre Dame, which is nice. At least for today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
All right, let's go ahead and turn your head to the left all the way. Okay. Not bad. Okay, to the right all the way. So when you're going to the right, where do you feel it stop? Is it here? Yep, 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 yep. Yep, that's exactly where it is. Left feels quite a bit better? Yeah, it before. does, it does, it does. Yeah, like, I, um, in the same way that I feel the tension here on the right, uh -huh. left, it feels a lot looser. Yeah. Ah! Push your head straight back. Straight back again. Okay, look to the right again. It's much looser. <laughs> But still, man, <laughs> this, this, was, this was being overdone. <laughs> but still, man, yeah. it's fine. I don't need to look that way. Oh. What's over there that's so important? Oh, just traffic. Oh. Look right again. Yeah, no, it's, it's much looser. Much yeah, looser. I, can, I can feel that it's uh, freed up a little bit. The blockage isn't so much on the right now as there's maybe the top of the left. Yeah. And I'm going to get right. Yeah. Oh. So let's go right all the way. Keep going. A little further. A little further. A little further. Mm -hmm. A little more. All the way over no, the shoulder. I'm going, I'm going, I'm trying. You can do it. Ah. Ah. Okay, back to center. Okay. I look right again. <laughs> You're a little too into that, bud. <laughs> All right, back to center. Look at the ceiling. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah. Like my, I feel like my eyes are more lining up with the ceiling a little, like more so than what it was. Yeah. I felt like I was kind of doing this, and I was like That's rolling my eyes in the back of my head. So I think we yeah. on, uh, Let's do a little stretch here. Sure. Johnny, okay. yeah. yeah. You're gonna anchor down here. You're gonna Johnny, look up yeah. and to the right. Okay. Do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come back. And again. <sighs> yeah. Keep doing that. <laughs> Stranger danger. More. Really? Wow. You'll see this. It is a guy to see. Two, one more. <laughs> you didn't tell him to howl? Yeah. You can do a little howl. Alright, uh, what's, what's your favorite uh, Kenny Omega match? Uh, what? Oh, wow. <laughs> Putting me on the spot? Yeah. What? Oh, man. I'm gonna have to say, you and Ibushi. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Which one? The first. Oh. The first. One. That's uh. Let's go to the left now. That put me on the map in a certain way for a lot yeah. of people. I think so. Okay, when you get to the top, stick your lips out. Do a little hop. the moon. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. There it is. <laughs> loose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't forget the lips. Ooh, never forget the ooh, lips. Yeah, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Two things in life you never forget. The lips and the tips. Yeah. One more. And the tips. There we go. Colloquially, I'm speaking about restauranteering. Of course. All right, look up again. Oh, yeah. Mm. Look at that. That's cool. Yeah, so. Yeah. Right in the middle. Okay, look down. But okay. a little to the right. And yeah. look a little to the right. So you're going to start with your chin down slightly to the left, okay. like almost to him, and he's going to grip your fascia. Now you're going to look up and tilt to the right as you get towards the top. Yeah. Okay. And how? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so the million dollar question. Yeah. Uh, Street Fighter 2 Turbo or the original Mortal Kombat? Oh, you know... To be honest, if I'm if I'm to teleport myself back to those days, I would say the original Mortal Kombat had more of an impact on me. Mm. But which but, had better, which had better gameplay? Street Fighter, easily. Especially easily. looking back now. Easily. Yeah. So what do you say the impact on it? It was the pseudo 3D graphics. It was the finishing moves. What what uh? It was just the first time we'd ever seen like really photorealistic fighting, yeah. with the realistic gore and the just gore. over the top. Brutal finishers Depending and fatalities. On which owned, I guess. Right, exactly. Yeah. Or if you were in the arcade. The Super Nintendo sweat, the, the, <laughs> gray, the gray blood. But I was lucky. The uh, ice cream shop near my place had a had a Mortal Kombat cab for a while, so I would frequent that very often. There's huge lineups all the time. So okay. I've always been one to kind of poo poo the Marvel Capcom series. What are your thoughts on that? I love you it. Love it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, uh, there are ones I like more than others, and my f my actual favorite, if it, if not three, 
is uh, Capcom versus Street Fighter, uh, or Marvel versus Street Fighter. I love that they have Sabretooth and, and Rogue and Gambit, mm-hmm. and uh, I think Cyclops is still in at that point too. Okay. A lot of people hate me for that, but I love Cyclops. All right, rank Mo- the franchises in order. Top four: Virtue Fighter, uh huh, Tekken, okay, uh, Street Fighter, okay, Mortal Kombat. Street Fighter, Tekken, Mortal Kombat, Virtual Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. For me, for me. Yeah. All right, rank the, rank the movies. Mortal Kombat, <laughs> Street Fighter, Dragon Ball. Oh, oh Dragon yeah. Ball. Uh, the ori- Stop the making fighter. animation. <laughs> yeah, the original, the first Mortal Kombat, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And then... The new one? No, okay. not, not so... You know, you know what? Nope. I'll tell you what, it lacked a certain feeling of impact. And you can't compare the soundtracks. The first soundtrack was incredible. Sound design, yeah. That's why I felt like, um, and I'm not like a huge, huge, huge Marvel Universe film guy, but I, that's what I thought Shane Chi did really well was just the choreography of the fight scenes, and you felt the blows. Whereas in the new Mortal Kombat, even though at times the choreography seemed great, you didn't, you still didn't feel the impact. A- Any time that there was a punch or kick hit or even a throw, it just, I felt like it was just. Everything felt light and felt too pretty. When it should have been a little, it should have been a little more gruesome, I thought, and a little more hard hitting. And um, yeah, I mean, it seems like there's gonna be another Mortal Kombat anyway, so hopefully that's something that uh, will be a little different in the next one. That's, that's all I can say. Really. How about the Street Fighter movie? So I, I, I hated it. Am I standing? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you were just gonna give me a hip toss in the Golden Team cab. Oh. What's your deal, brother? What's going on here? And what do you want me to do? What am I supposed to do? Just be yourself. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. To be yourself is all yeah. that you can be. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was... That's kind of returning back to the original topic of conversation. Yeah, full circle. Yeah. It's all come up full circle. Always have to come back. Yeah. It's a, the, the story arc, the... Uh, what is it, the 1979... Uh, what was that thing where he... What was the dude's name? He like wrote the the arc for how movies should go and how stories are supposed to be told. Oh, you're talking about the hero's journey? Yes. Uh, Campbell. Yeah, yeah. You're a film guy. I like film. Yeah. I mean, I, I do watch what I can. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say, you know. I love the Street Fighter movie. I do too. Which is just Yeah. It's really good. Although, you know. For a, for a diff- different JVD reason. JVD should not have been Guile. Let's just, <laughs> let's just clear that up. Yeah. We should have. Even. Yeah, who should jump Chuck Norris, in? man? At that time, you think? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think he was. Uh, see, even so though even though Jean Claude wasn't a beefy accent? guy, I just I think just. Hmm. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> physique, physique wise, I don't think there's anyone that really That's fit fair. the bill at that time. You would have had to have. It could move like him, and exactly. Yeah, you you're probably right. Yeah. Try to relax that shoulder. Oh yeah. Ah. <laughs> 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 also, Sagat was severely under. Yeah. Underplayed in that movie, but you know, overall, Dees, Mad Dees, the Blanca storyline. <laughs> you know, probably the yeah. best cast character in that movie was was Zangief. True. Yeah. I don't know who that guy was, but oh, he was, was no, I, he was great. Yeah. He was great, uh, the channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was hilarious. And even uh, even Honda wasn't bad either. Even yeah. though I've, uh, I don't know why he had a job as as Chung Lee's. Uh, Whatever. Right, camera guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we didn't have to give everybody random jobs. Yeah, <laughs> <sighs> that wasn't necessary. I don't think. It was. Was it the the power duo that was like? Was it Zangief and Balrog? Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, they're hilarious. Yes. Those guys were great comedic relief. And the funny part is, I can't remember, aside from the end, I can't remember one fight scene from the movie. Not even one. Yeah, I think Aside I'm... from Gal, Gal Bison at the end, yeah. I couldn't remember one. Nothing. Yeah, that's I a think point. Blanca did something, but... <laughs> and raged and like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I just remember the, the invisible boat, like above the water. Yeah. <laughs> one, the one-liners were great, though. I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> sure. All right, go ahead and look to the right again. Okay. And left again. Pretty good. And then look up to the ceiling. Nice. Yeah, that's noticeably better. I can yeah. tell right now. Yeah. All right, let's stand up and face that way. Okay. Let's go. Both hands are going to go right here. Uh, like here? Yeah. Cross like this? Yeah, I'm going to okay. go like that. And look up. There we go. Ooh. All right, shake it out, see how you feel. 
Yeah, I mean, one thing that I can I can say is I have a lot of difficulty just doing a straight side raise because of my shoulder injury. Yeah. Um, I would have to really sort of deviate to here to do anything. Mm -hmm. So to be able to go perfectly sideways is great. So that feels pretty good. Yeah, my range of motion for, for looking yeah. is, is great. My neck is uh, feeling good. Yeah, looking up good. Yeah, I'm uh, looking up, looking at right the sides. So you're gonna go here, okay. up and down. Catch that oh, white tug. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Give me the business. <laughs> Okay, go okay. up. Yep. Also, yeah. Kenny, I'm gonna yeah. the red car on one. Okay. Yeah, this is my family. These are the guys that uh, took me under their wing. They're supplementing me up, trying to help me uh, stay fit, stay healthy with all these uh, injuries and with the schedule. They've been kind to me and kind to uh, many others in the AW family and otherwise. So shout outs to them. So right now, longest yeah. reign. Yeah. How long is gonna? How long is the ring gonna last? I mean, I, I don't see anybody that's got the ability to take it. So let's go, champ. Yeah, let's I, I, I think it's just gonna, it's gonna be one of those things where you know, eventually, I'm, I'm, might just fall down a flight of stairs, get an injury, and I will have to just Maybe. drop. Yeah, I just have to drop the title. I just have to return, it, return to sender. That's it. Otherwise, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get it from a match. That's for sure. Boom. That's it. It's not happening. The gauntlet has been dropped. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to FedEx. Get the appropriate size box and just send it back to the offices of, of Con Industries or whatever. <laughs> whatever whatever that guy's whatever. business is. Yeah, whatever he does in his spare time, you know? Yeah, I think he was in a group in the early 90s. It was like an R&B group. He was one yeah. of the three. Shaka? Uh, Shaka. Yeah, that's the one, huh? <laughs> or if we're talking about Mortal Kombat still, you know, right. maybe he's related to uh, that, that, that final boss. Yeah. Should have been in Tony Tony Tony. Yeah. The family of Shao, Shao, yeah, Shao, Shao, Shad, and Tony, and yeah, Co and, Tony. And, and and Kotal, hey, yeah. <laughs> well played. All right, raise that right arm up again there. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. I can get bicep to ear. Yeah, I like it. Check, check his bicep position. We're doing the speed, the speed test. The speed. Make sure we're good there. Go here. Okay. Come up. Don't let me push you down. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Check, just check those stuff. You have a press. Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's tension like in here, just, but I think it's I was uh, I did strikes the other day in like farmers walks. So I think it's just my just soreness. Some soreness yeah. yeah, I don't think it's anything. I don't think it's that I'm not strong enough. Okay. <laughs> You're strong enough. Let the record show. I think it's that. <laughs> yeah, he's the world's strongest. Make sure you guys tune in. Go follow him on all social media accounts. Yep. Twitter, Instagram. Uh, yep. It's Facebook, all there. All of the above. Yep. Are you still twitching? No, not twitching. no, not yet, not yet. YouTube. I mean, we do, we have an interview. Make a YouTube comeback. I, I think. I mean, what is this? We got the BTE channel on YouTube, so you know, I I do show up on there quite often. Okay. Feel free to to check that out. That's kind of part of the reason why AW is a thing is just because of a small little YouTube channel that blew up called Being the Elite. I'm mostly on Twitter. At least that's mostly me on Twitter. Okay. I do have accounts on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, no, but really, like, I'm I'm active on social media. Please follow me there. Um, Except for new sponsors, still. Of course, always, yeah. always. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm as much as I love wrestling, as much as that is my my being and what I do in life. You know, I'm Head always and shoulders. To, give him, show him, give him some money. Yeah, or horse and mane or whatever, mane and tail, mane, mane and tail. tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horse and mane and tail <laughs> yep. and shoulder. The horse shampoo. You, you, are you, do you know what I'm talking about? I know. It's the white bottle. It's it's like orange and and blue. It's got a picture of a horsey on it. I think it's four horses, but. Humans use it. It's safe for humans and it's great for your hair. I wow. think. Yeah. I'm just using it. Yeah. Everyone here knows. It's just you that doesn't. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. But okay. Sponsor. Sponsor. <laughs> yeah. I don't Man, use. I don't use baby. horse products. Man, horse. Uh, I use the I use the tranquilizers and the anabolic steroids. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. The par anti parasites as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The same stuff that Joe Rogan took, or whatever. Apparently, Perfect. is what they were saying. I, I can't remember what the that whole hoopla was. You got some? You got the hookup? No, I don't got any hookup. <laughs> I got a hookup for nothing. So make sure you guys tune in. Watch the king keep his his throne, his crown, his belt, his beautiful horsey mane of hair. My pride. And his pride. Yeah. And just keep putting on the best matches out there on television. No shots fired in that particular instance. No. Go show this man some love, and thanks for coming on today. We Thank you so much you. for everything. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys again soon.